Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. We've done a video recently of this particular chainsaw grinder from Jono and Jono in Ballarat, Victoria. And we gave a review on it and all the good and bad points. Uh, but also you can get this type of grind all over the world. It's all rebadged. Another name is Timber Tough. And it's, it's a green, it's all green in colour. But they're all made in the same factory all out of China. And the only criticism that I really had was this particular wheel here uh, seemed to come loose a bit. It, so one of the easiest ways to stop it from coming loose, uh, on the on original Oregon ones, they're plastic, but they've got a tapered thread. But what they do on here is that they encase a nut inside the plastic. So the wheel spins fairly free and the side plate can move. Look, get yourself a bit of Teflon tape like that. Wrap it around about three, three, four times. So take this off, wrap it around three, four times, and you'll find out that it's uh, not too bad. It's got a bit of tension, and the vibration of the grinder doesn't make it come loose. If it comes loose again, it's just a matter of putting a couple more bits of uh, thread tape on there, but uh, I hardly ever have to do that. So, But anyway, that's just another technical tip. So what I'm trying to do today is talk about uh grinding wheel profiles somebody put a comment in there and said that they were new to grinding and they were sort of interested in this profile well typically this type of profile is fairly uh standard it's almost like a half a circle so we'll talk about different grinding wheels and and that so it typically would look something like this it just has a nice half a circle rounded so that's fairly standard and when you do get one of these, like many other grinders, you do get this little plastic card that has a template. And as you can see, it's like a half a circle. So the whole idea is that you get a silicon carbide block with it. I've got diamond files, and diamond cards that I can use. And the whole idea is that you start the grinder up and you proceed to just run this very lightly over the wheel backwards and forwards like that until you don't take much off and you don't put a lot of pressure on and then you get your little card and you place it in there till you get the profile looking good now one other thing is that when you do do this you're only ever really using one side of the wheel because the other side of the wheel you don't use so it's a bit like this you're only ever really dressing this side here because this is a side that comes in uh, and sharpens a tooth. This side never even touches uh, the tooth at all. But nonetheless, it's, I suppose it's a good practice. The other thing is you can do a semi-rounded uh, profile. Uh, you don't have to have that full uh, half a circle like that. So this one is, is quite good as well. It's not critical. So you don't have to be really critical on this. Now, the other thing is, there's another thing. Uh, some people out there, you may have heard of Hexacut uh, by Still. It's a new profile. It looks a little bit like this. You'll see that it's got like a hexagonal type shape. It's almost a right angle, actually, if you look at it. And Husqvarna have their X-Cut. Now, you can actually play around with that by dressing your wheel almost 90 degrees I've got written here 90 degrees to 110 degrees. You can play around with this. And you normally, for a 3.8 standard chain, I use a 3.2 millimetre wheel, a small wheel. And you sort of end up with a profile like that. Very aggressive, works really well. Uh, I generally do this only on full chisel. I don't do it on semi-chisel, so I only do it on full chisel. And it works quite well for me. So... The other thing that's critical and important, we always talk, you always hear about people with the top plate angle here. So 
you know, obviously if you get this razor sharp, but it's also critical that you have this side plate that's razor sharp. And as you can see, this is the nice, what we refer to as the C-shape here. So when the wheel comes in at a 60 degree angle, it creates this little profile, this little C-shape here. So I guess it's, it's not critical, but you know, you really want to try and dress your wheel so that it looks like that and it sits in the profile really good. This particular wheel's made by Kinnick. Uh, they're all over the world. They're in Taiwan, so they're not a bad brand either. The other brand that's actually not too bad is uh, one called Molmab. They're not too bad all, also. And one thing to remember about these wheels, these uh, aluminium oxide wheels, they come in different grit size, but unfortunately, if you look at the wheel, you won't see anything written on there about what size grit it is. So you need to ask your dealer what, what size grit size that is. If you're getting the Oregon ones, uh, you can get different colours. Uh, I think the green could be 80 grit size, but you start off at 60 grit size, 80 grit size and 100. 100 being very, very fine. The finer you go, the more heat that it will generate. So, you, you know, if you've got a uh, 100 grit size, you're going to generate a lot of heat. So take it easy. The wheels come in three sizes, 3.2 millimetres for, for 3.8 low profile chain, 4.7 millimetres for 3.8 chain 404, and 6 millimetre uh, diameter wheel for doing rakers. Personally, I would never ever use, and I've never used, a wheel to do my rakers. I always do them by hand using a progressive depth gauge. Uh, I can't think of anything worse than using a grinder to do the rakers because I don't believe it's a very accurate way of doing it because you can end up, uh, yeah, to me it's just not the accurate way to do it. You should be using a progressive depth gauge. Uh, I promoted these many, many times in the past and every time I talk about grinding or doing chains, I always talk about the progressive depth gauge, which is this type here, because it sits on one individual tooth and that's why it's superior and it's a little bit more aggressive than your standard uh, flat con uh, constant gauge, which is this type here. That's your constant little flat gauge that a lot of people use there. Nowhere near as good as a progressive depth gauge. So the other thing that I would really encourage people to do is that, and you may not notice it, especially as a beginner, that when you put your wheel on, so let's just say you take this wheel off the grinder and you were to put a uh, 4.7 millimeter uh, diameter wheel on. What actually happens is the clamping mechanism that's on here, you've got a washer on the outside or a, a large bit of aluminium that's turned in a lathe and, and a fairly large washer that's pressed on the other side with a six mil bolt that holds it in. And what it actually does, and you may be able to, oh, you may be able to see it. It actually, yeah, I think you can see it. That large washer uh, compresses the paper on both sides. I think you can see where that's been compressed, and that generally holds the wheel fairly straight. So when you put a brand new wheel on, generally brand new wheels are pretty good. And you nip it up and you spin the wheel, you're looking for any uh, run out of the wheel. And if you do get a little bit of run out, you can loosen the bolt and move it into a different position. You can do that five or six times. If that doesn't uh, give it uh, a nice wheel that's got virtually uh, very little run out, you can flip the wheel over the other side and try that. Now, wheel wobble's not a very good thing or run out because you might find out that only 60% or 70% of the grinding wheel is actually touching the tooth and 30% spinning around not touching. So you really want to try and get at least over 90% of the wheel that's grinding the tooth. If that fails, you can always get yourself a little tiny cardboard washers that I've made. This is for the inside that fits over the 22 mil arbor. This is on the outside. So with these two little tiny bits of cardboard that are off the back of a little notebook, it gives it extra spacing 
and more room to compress on the wheel because the stone won't compress but the cardboard will and that generally holds the wheel fairly central and eliminates your side play or wheel wobble so let's just recap for those beginners out there it's probably i've got multiple grinders so i don't go around swapping wheels all the time so i don't get wheel wobble problems when i put a new wheel on i make sure that it's running true no wheel wobble no yeah no run out and if i have to put a uh, cardboard washer on i will that wheel stays on there if I'm doing a 4.7 or 3 8 chain and I require the larger wheel, I get the grinder that's got that on. So I've got multiple grinders and that, that I find that works good. So look, just to briefly recap, it is not critical that when you grind or dress your wheel, what you want to end up is, is virtually a half a circle. You want your wheel to look like this, a half a circle. It's not critical, as I said before, it's not critical. Let's just say it's desirable, but it's certainly not critical. You can even have, as I said, a semi-rounded profile, which was this one here. A lot of people prefer that. And it's only the left side that really comes in contact from the bottom of the wheel to the side. That side there is the only part that touches the tooth. The right-hand side doesn't touch, but nonetheless, it's a good practice to dress a wheel. And as I said before, if you're playing around with your wheel and you dress it, and let's just say this was your grinding wheel, and as you can see, that it, it's it's a 90-degree angle, and if you're looking at your X cut or, or your uh, hexa cut, you can see that if you can play around and, and dress this at a different angle, this is what your tooth will end up like but like i said uh when i am doing that special profile i use a 3.2 millimeter wheel i don't like to use the larger 4.7 millimeter wheel and dress that flat because that seems to uh uh not give me the right profile on a uh larger tooth a 3.8 standard or a 404 chain 3.2 millimeter wheel uh gives the nice uh profile it does cut probably 10% faster, so it, it's, it's quite good. And the interesting thing enough is, is that, you know, if we compare the standard tooth like that and the standard C, what we refer to as the C shape, and then you look at something like that, which is totally different. So you can see that the side plate shape is not as critical as, as uh, what you may have thought it was. And that's why I'm saying you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to dress it up uh, that often every now and then's okay because if you go from this profile to this profile you can see that there's a big difference and the cutting performance of this works better than this the most important thing in all of the grinding is that the top plate is razor sharp and the side plate is razor sharp same as this top plate razor sharp side plate razor sharp the reason that this type of profile actually works quite good because if you look at the point it really gets into the timber it's very very aggressive point whereas if you look at this one here you've got like the little hook on there so you know you've got the aggressiveness on your top plate because they're both the same angle 30 degrees but you've got the aggressiveness on that side plate with that angle there so what this virtually is, this this is 90 degrees here. So you come in at 60 degrees here. You're coming in, you're angling this at 60 degrees. And you've got this 60 degrees all the way down. And then you come down on this angle here. Whereas on a standard chain, you're coming in at 60 degrees for the first millimetre. And then you've got this nice rounded shape, which is the shape of the wheel. Or the shape of the file. So... It's the same sort of thing that when you look at a file, yeah, you've got that rounded shape. It creates, yeah, a file only sits less than half of the file only comes in contact with the tooth. And that's the same as a grinding wheel. Only half of the grinding wheel of the radius only ever comes in contact with the tooth, which is the left side. The right side doesn't even touch. 
So when you're dressing up, pay more attention to the left side because that's the side that comes in contact with it. Don't have to be too critical. I only need to check it every now and then. As I said, it's not a game changer if it's slightly out. Uh, look, I hope that helps. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time, different profiles. And as I say, your X cut or your hexa uh, cut. Uh, X cut is from Husqvarna and uh, the uh, hexa cut is from Still. So with Husqvarna's X cut has been out for quite a while. Still have only brought the uh, hexa cut out for a while. I've been doing this profile quite a lot on my grinding wheel. I'm using a 3 8 uh, wheel. And as I say, it works really good. And I only ever use it on full chisel. And as you can see how aggressive that is. So that's something even a beginner you can play around with. Uh, if you don't really want to do it on a brand new chain, I can understand that. But when the chain is starting to get in the past worn halfway you might want you may want to try that and and see what you think of it i personally like it i do uh, most of my full chisel chains that way now and i find that they work quite good and all as i'm doing is emulating stills hexa cut or i'm emulating the x cut from husqvarna very very similar a lot of other manufacturers are bringing their full chisels out with that very little sharp point Sometimes the sharp point only comes halfway down, but nonetheless, they're sort of sticking to this sort of profile uh, with slight variations of their own profile. Look, thanks for watch watching. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, I hope that addresses uh, reshaping your wheel and using your wheel to do different profiles. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.